Hi, I'm Daniel Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services for the management of waste and for the transport of hazardous materials. In this video, I'm going to provide a brief description of the re regulatory requirements for the on-site accumulation of spent or used lithium batteries and the requirements of the regulations for their off-site transportation. Okay, a couple explanations and disclaimers before we get into it. First off, this video is a very brief description of some very complicated regulations. I've explained those regulations in articles that I've written for my blog that go into this in more detail. I'll have a link to those articles in the description of this video. So take this video as kind of an overview and then dig deeper into my articles for more information. Uh, disclaimer, first of these regulations may change over time, particularly the regulations for lithium batteries. So the information I'm providing here is up to date as of April 1st of 2018. Another disclaimer, your state regulations for the management of waste may differ. So you have to check with your state environmental agency. Though I think everything I'm going to tell you here in this video is mostly uh, is acceptable throughout most states that I'm familiar with. And finally, the, the big disclaimer for them all is that the ultimate responsibility for compliance with the regulations for the management of waste and the transport of hazardous materials, it's all on you as the generator of the waste or the shipper of the hazardous material. So take this information in this video, research my articles, look at the regulations, contact the US EPA, the US DOT, your state environmental agency, and make sure you do your research to uh, make sure that you're in compliance with these regulations, okay? So let's dig into it then. Let's start to get into what you have to do. First off, for the on-site accumulation of your spent or used lithium batteries, you want to limit it only to those lithium batteries that are coming from consumer devices. So it might be a, a battery pack like this, which actually has three different batteries in it. It could be a a, a button cell battery like this. It could go all the way up to a, a laptop size battery. So we're talking consumer devices, cell phones, laptops, uh, even uh, bigger devices uh, will have the type of battery that you can accumulate on site under these regulations. So we're talking smaller consumer type size batteries. Those are what would be known as a smaller lithium battery. You need to package each battery in a non-metallic enclosure, which could be a little bag like this. So you'd have to get a bag that fits, okay? But for example, you could take your lithium battery that is spent or used, seal it up in a sandwich bag, and there you go. You have your non-metallic enclosure. This battery then needs to go into a strong outer packaging. And that's what this is. This is simply a plastic container that I purchased at a local hardware store for relatively inexpensive, nothing fancy about it. It is not specification packaging, and that's what's important. Just a strong outer packaging. You could use something like this. You could use a cardboard box. You might have a wooden crate. You could have some other plastic pail or container. Whatever. Any of those are fine as long as they are a strong outer packaging. Now, um, during on-site accumulation, a lid is not required. So you don't have to have the lid. If you want to have a lid on your container, that's fine, but it's not required. It could simply be uh, stored until you need it later. All right. Some other batteries can go in the container. A spent alkaline battery all the way up to nine volts but no larger okay so a, a regular alkaline battery once again has to be bagged so it's got to go into a non-metallic enclosure uh, sandwich bag is a good way to do that right so these can go in with our lithium batteries what you cannot put in with your lithium batteries 
are other battery, battery chemistries. So like a lead acid battery, even a gel or a solid cannot go in there. Or a nickel cadmium really should not go in there as well. Those need to be accumulated separately. Um, uh, you should label and mark the container. So it must be labeled and marked simply as universal waste batteries. That's it. You don't need a label like this. Uh, simply universal waste batteries and the initial date of accumulation. So whatever day the first lithium battery went in here, that's your date of initial accumulation. That needs to be recorded on the container as well. Then you have one year of on-site accumulation for your universal waste lithium batteries. Now, what if after a year or up to a year, your container is only half full or a quarter full? Do you have to ship it off site and pay the full disposal cost? And the answer is no. The regulations, the federal regulations allow you for more than one year if necessary. Okay, so check with your state on that one. Okay, different states interpret that if necessary differently. Okay, so check with your state, see if they will allow you more than one year for on site accumulation of your universal waste. Most do, in my experience, if you can demonstrate a need. Okay, um, you have to inform your employees of how to handle the universal waste and what to do in an emergency. But that's it. It doesn't necessarily require training. It could be a sign on the wall. It could be a piece of paper you have them review and, and sign. I mean, that's it, okay? Nothing fancy there. What are the breaks you get? Because that's everything. That's all you have to do for the on-site accumulation. You don't need to notify or report to the US EPA. You're not subject to the 90-day or 180-day on-site accumulation time limits. You don't have to have a contingency plan or do the emergency preparation. You don't have to perform hazardous waste personnel training and a lot more. So you're not subject to any of that for the onset accumulation of your spent or used lithium batteries as long as you comply with those basic requirements. Now, at some point, you're going to need to ship this off-site for its recycling or disposal. How are you going to do that? Well, the main thing is you want to limit the gross package weight to no more than 30 kilograms or 66 pounds, okay? So that's everything. That's the batteries, that's the packaging, that's the lid, everything that goes on. And you put this on a scale, if it weighs 31 kilograms, then you got to take some out, okay? If it weighs 29 kilograms, well, maybe you could put a few more batteries in, but you have that 30 kilogram limit for your gross weight of the package. When is time to ship off-site? That's when you need to close it securely. So you need to make sure that this container is closed securely. Wouldn't be a bad idea to tape it shut or seal it shut, but that's not required. If we've got this closed securely, that complies with the requirements. You must, at this point, when you're shipping it off-site, you have to display a different uh, label or marking. So you have two options. You can display the lithium battery handling label. That's the one with the wine glass and the batteries and the flame. Okay. This is still acceptable to use until the end of 2018. But as of January 1, 2019, you must use the new lithium battery mark. This mark has been acceptable since January 1 of 2017. Okay, so it's acceptable now and after uh, January 1 of 2019, this is the only one you can use. Okay, but that's it. The lithium battery mark has to be displayed on the package. Uh, the transportation must be by highway only. Okay, and the transportation must be by a universal waste transporter and it must be going to a universal waste destination facility. If you can comply with all of that, then you don't need specification packaging. You don't need any other package labels or marks. You don't need a shipping paper. 
So there'll be no bill of lading, no uniform hazardous waste manifest, definitely not that. You don't need placards on the truck, and you don't need the DOT hazmat employee training. So you're getting out of the training entirely, okay? And that's it. That's all you have to do. So again, this was only a brief video summarizing the regulations. I encourage you to go to the link to the articles that I've included in the description and uh, do your research and contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much.